plenty of cars have come and gone and to be honest, none really deserve your tears. In most cases, it was good riddance to bad rubbish. Remember the Chevrolet Enjoy? But not this car, not the Tata Nano. This car was a seminal car in the Indian automotive universe. When this was unveiled at the Auto Expo, I'd never seen so many journalists packed into one space and this was the biggest haul at the Auto Expo. This car made global corporations sit up and take notice. Because of this car, Carlos Ghosn shook hands with Rajiv Bajaj with the goal to make a Bajaj Renault rival to the Nano. It didn't work out, but in a roundabout fashion, that gave us the quid and also the Bajaj cute. This car showed what frugal Indian automotive engineering is capable of. And the fact that this car did not sell, that it didn't take off, it makes me desperately sad. <laughs> Welcome to Gone But Not Forgotten and this is on the 1 lakh rupee car. Of course, the Nano was never really 1 lakh rupees because the prices were raised almost immediately but we have all three generations of the Nano out here. This is the first generation, this is the CX trim which was the mid-level trim. It got the 2-cylinder 35bhp engine. Then power went up by around 3bhp, there were more refinements in the twist. It also got electric power steering and finally, Towards the end of its life came the Gen X, which was pitched as a city commuter and it got a boot that would open. It also got an automatic transmission. I don't know if it's called a boot because there's an engine underneath it. But yeah, let's go for a drive in India's version of the Porsche 911. If you told your friends in Germany or in the States, for instance, that you were driving a rear-engine, rear-wheel drive, air-cooled car, they would fall down and think, oh shit, you're driving a classic Porsche. But that is what the Nano was. Rear-engine, rear-wheel drive, and these vents out here, this is cooling vents for the engine. This car, everything was designed from scratch. Blue sky thinking and a clean sheet of paper. Nothing was adapted from existing Tata Motors product lines. Everything was designed and built for a purpose, and that was to keep costs in check and you can see it all over the car for instance three lug nuts for the wheels that was done to cut costs this left side wing mirror that was not there on the car you had to fit it as an aftermarket accessory a lot of small little things but then the price was the ultimate target and that's not to say that it was compromised in any way when i did the first road test way back in 2009 i said that this car they'd got it spot on this was not a compromise and really even today, when you drive it, it does not feel compromised. It's been ages since I drove a Nano. And I have to say, the performance from the engine, it's not bad at all. So what you have is a 624cc, all aluminum, twin cylinder engine. It makes 34.5 bhp, 81 Newton meters of torque. Zero to 100, well, let's start with zero to 60. 0 to 60, back when I tested it in 2009, it took 9.8 seconds. 0 to 100, well, that took almost a kilometer to get to 100 and 34.5 something like that seconds. So, 0 to 100 is not its forte. Top speed, 105 kilometers per hour. And this engine was again designed from scratch for the Nano. And one of the big talking points was the fuel injection. Bosch, they developed a low cost ECU for the engine. And of course, there were a lot of other cost saving measures into it. But that Bosch low cost ECU, that was also one of the big talking points on this car. Four speed gearbox. Well, at the start, they talked about also developing a CVT, but eventually what came was an AMT. But initial cars, all had the four speed manual gearbox the throws actually not bad short throws cable actuated gearbox but quite precise direct in fact i remember calling this a much nicer gearbox than the one that was there in the indica of that time and then there's the space i am five foot nine and i can sit really comfortably there's this is what three four four inches of free headroom Behind me, I can again sit very comfortably for a four-seater. This actually is very spacious. Tata Motors claimed that this has 21% more interior room than the then smallest car, which was the Maruti 800. And it's a fact. The owners of these Nanos, 
it's not like they need a cheap car anymore they all you know gone up in life they are well to do but they use this because this is excellent for the city really practical small size you can park it anywhere you don't have to worry about anything with the nano and the turning circle oh is terrific 4 meter turning circle that was another huge talking point on the nano the construction of the nano this is a monocoque but this is the hybrid monocoque so there are two cross members that are welded into the monocoque to give it added rigidity back in the day so this is 2009 it met all crash safety norms that were prescribed by the indian government which weren't much but it met all the norms at that time and then tata motors also used this word of scalability that they could upgrade it for future frontal offset and side impact crashes of course in today's day and age is not going to meet any crash safety norms but they also had the nano europa in fact the nano europa was shown almost at the same month that we first drove the nano in india the nano europa was shown at the geneva motor show it had slightly different styling it had a wider track it had a three cylinder motor so a little bit more power that was actually targeted at the european markets tata motors were also developing an airbag for the nano because to sell a car in europe you had to have an airbag they were targeting a euro ncap 3 maybe even 4 but definitely a three star crash safety rating there was rumors around that time that tata motors was developing a 10 dollar airbag which was all rubbish but they were actually developing that nano europa for european markets and then they planned to launch that in india that nano europa was also being developed with a cvt gearbox but unfortunately nothing came out of that europa there were just too many issues for tata motors to deal with starting with right at the start moving their entire plant this is a greenfield facility remember for a car that they had huge volume hopes from on october the 3rd when tata motors announced they would be moving out of shingur we have taken the very regretful decision to move the nano project out of west bengal they had almost finished the plant and then they had to disassemble the plant from shingur and move it all the way across the country from the east to the extreme west to sanan to another greenfield facility that delayed the project by 2 years that increased the prices so the nano it was plagued with so many problems and so much of negativity because so many people manufacturers environmentalists all of them tried to pull down the nano because this posed an existential threat the whole rationale of the nano which ratan tata he put it so eloquently was to move families mother father two kids away from the scooters and at the launch they showed a clip of the scooter with the family of four in the rain struggling in the rain and he said that he wanted to move indians from scooters and into something a little safer something with a roof over the head where four people could sit comfortably wear their seat belts definitely more safer than a scooter and that was a good really good thought Now Tata Motors they aren't a philanthropic organization that is Tata Sons but Tata Motors well they have shareholders to answer to but I have to point out that they had their hearts in the right places with the Nano they wanted to do good they saw a problem that India was afflicted with and they tried to address that with the Nano the thought behind the Nano it was noble unfortunately they couldn't make a business case out of it but fact of the matter is that those two wheeler guys every rupee counts so service cost very very important a car even a car like a nano will never match the service cost of a bike a motorcycle the fuel efficiency even though this had a 23.5 claimed fuel efficiency those 100 cc motorcycles were giving 80 90 km to the liter so that gap was also huge so getting people to move away from motorcycles and scooters to a four wheeler not so easy the nano it also had initial quality problems those issues with the fires were well documented i think a little too much was made out of it what tata motor said was one of those reasons was because some wires were spliced to put an aftermarket stereo another there was an oil rag that was left on a hot exhaust and that caught fire but fact is that tata motors they didn't address those issues quickly enough and that created this whole snowball effect also coupled with all the negativity around the nano around that time there was a huge vociferous audience against the nano but there was an equally huge audience that was for the nano that were really pushing the nano's case forward 
and i remember in those days environmentalists they were making a huge deal about the nano they were painting these doomsday scenarios where our cities would be chock a block clogged with nanos everybody driving nanos conveniently forgetting the fact that they were being driven to their think tanks in the back of big sedans this particular version that i'm driving this is the cx so this is the mid spec version it got black bumpers it didn't have power steering but honestly power steering is something that you would really want only while doing three point turns but otherwise while driving this is fine the tires on the nano they were different sizes so 145 at the back 135 in the front to make sure that the front runs out of grip first and it doesn't catch and bite and roll the car over and of course with rear wheel drive if you had a bit of gravel you could get the tail to come out a bit i think the rev limiter was at 45 or 5000 rpm so it's very easy to jump into the rev limiter but this is actually a torquey engine so you drive it up in the hills and you still see a few of these nanos running around up in manali or in the northeast and it's actually very capable on hilly terrain because of the torque of this engine in fact the whole idea of doing the nano gone but not forgotten was seeing all these nanos running around at the hilton in chillum that has got very steep internal roads and initially they had planned to use golf carts electric golf carts but because it was so steep those golf carts just did not work and that's why now they have a whole fleet of nanos being used for internal transport at the hilton and they use that because it's got space so the customers the guests can sit comfortably and it has a lot of torque to deal with those steep inclines and in fact there were no real complaints with nanos crashing or having poor dynamic behavior and all of that because on that front tata motors had really sorted out this car okay one problem the brakes drum brakes all round no brakes were a problem dynamics won't but the brakes were a problem and now let's go drive the nano with power steering not that this really takes too much effort but it did get power steering the twist did get power steering there can be no greater usp than love at first sight those are not my words those are the words that tata motors used to describe the styling of the nano and even today 16 years later this is such a good design it is so stylish it is so attractive and it is so distinctive you see a nano on the road even today and it will still turn heads this silhouette this egg shaped silhouette it is classic it was designed by justin novak at triton in italy which is now part of tata motors vast empire of design studios the height it ensures that you walk into the car You don't have to crouch in to get into the car. You sit inside. There is a lot of headroom. With me sitting in the front on the driver's seat, there is still enough and more room at the back. So this is spacious. It is comfortable. 180 mm ground clearance. That is nearly SUV type of ground clearance. And if you notice, there is barely any overhang. So there is nothing that is really going to touch when you go over a rough patch of road. 3.1 meters in length, 1.6 meters wide, 1.65 meters high. This proportions were done so that it could fit into any little gap in the city and with this version the twist they also gave it electric power steering so that made it even easier to drive in the city it also got a little bit more power a little bit more torque and there were a lot of refinements that came in from customer feedback from the very first generation of the nano product upgrade to the nano it didn't really come thick and fast and the twist it came 5 years after the nano was first launched and the twist the big improvement was this power steering so it got electric power steering i think this probably would have been the cheapest car in the world with power steering and you could turn it with one finger you could maneuver it with one finger it also got power windows so world's cheapest car with power windows it got a glove box so the dashboard the architecture it remained unchanged and this was also a low cost architecture so the whole central panel was done so that this could be common for both left hand drive as well as right hand drive markets 
a central speedometer it also got a proper fuel gauge the earlier one just had a digital fuel gauge it got a trip meter so some additions the center console it is finished in silver it's got an integrated cd player those days cd player and speakers on the space on the dash the engine power went up by 3 bhp torque also went up a bit and the gear ratios it was revised to make it easier to drive in the city well, honestly i think the steering is a bit too light the non assisted that works well but uh, this i think is a bit <laughs> too light but nevertheless for city use just look at this one finger <laughs> very light of course quality improvements were made to the nano so talking to rajesh who owns this car he says it's done 99390 km so this car has almost done 1 lakh km since it was bought in 2014 he says that this was one of the first nano twist to be delivered in pune when it was launched 1 lakh km and in terms of the quality he really has no problems apart from the fact that if anything needs to be changed the spare parts the replacement parts that's not of great quality so he's terrified of having to change anything but otherwise he says that the reliability the quality it's all pretty decent and he drives other cars so it's not like this is his only car tires he says the rear tires it gets worn out in 20000 kilometers that's also because they're small little tires but otherwise zero problems and here u turns with a nano twist <laughs> with one finger of course you know the way to drive so don't drive like this but i'm just demonstrating how easy it is to drive and the thing that keeps astonishing me is how comfortable the seats are how phenomenal the visibility is it's like a panoramic view all around this small little glass on the a pillar it opens up little light over there also so there are no blind spots as such such compact proportions but such phenomenal space inside the car it really is something else in terms of the stability i didn't mention that in the first car but it's the same and i'm doing what 80 km per hour now which is the legal speed limit of course those days there was no beeper no 80 km per hour beeper but at 80 km per hour it feels perfectly stable it's not like it is jumping all over the place or doing anything funny and that's why in that first road test also we said that the nano it feels like a proper car it doesn't feel like something that is compromised except for the fact that to fill it up you have to open the frunk how do you fill fuel in a nano and that's the fuel filler cap It's a 15 liter fuel tank, which was later on upgraded to 20, 22 odd liters. Bit cumbersome. And to access the engine, oh, that's a full rigmarole. If you need to access the engine to service it, for instance, you tip down the seats, lift a bunch of mats, and you see these wing nuts. so you undo the wing nuts and underneath is the engine also this is how you access the boot in all these variants so you have to tip down the seats and you get an 80 liter boot also it gets hot here because the engine is there so don't put tubs of ice cream as a city commuter this still even today it just makes so much sense okay is the handling is something that uh, it got to be a little circumspect about and even though this has a little engine the turn of pace is honestly even today for a city commuter not bad at all okay you're not going to win traffic light grand prix but it's not like you're going to be left way behind either it's, it's all right it's quite all right so it gets up to 80 easy then on of course it'll struggle and after that 105 is the top speed 
and funny thing is that these guys were just talking to me earlier and two of the three have got speeding fines with the nano for doing 90 in an 80 zone or something like that so in a nano also you can get busted for speeding <laughs> the gear shift is nice it really is nice there's there's nothing wrong with it even in today's context there's really nothing wrong with it just be a little easy around corners and that also is just a matter of getting used to because you're not used to a rear wheel drive rear engine car but you just get used to it and corners also will be fine because the steering is too light and the na- tires are very narrow so there isn't much cornering grip all that great fuel efficiency is also good is the fact that these narrow little tires don't have much rolling resistance so cornering by today's yardsticks be careful though as a city commuter full power run in an anno You don't have a tachometer, so you have to anticipate when the red line is going to come. Gear shifts, crisp, quick. So you get to 80 easy, then on it takes a bit of time. It's showing 100 in third, and that's it, 105. Why did the Nano not sell? If they got the engineering so right, if it was so good to drive, why did it not sell? I think the number one problem was just perception. Now Tata Motors, in all honesty, never started off their whole marketing campaign as this one lakh rupee car. I think that whole tag started off in an interview that Ratan Tata did with, I think, the Wall Street Journal at the Geneva Motor Show. But since then, that one lakh rupee tag stuck, and the problem was that nobody wanted to be seen in the world's cheapest car in India. After your house, a car is the second most important purchase. A car is aspirational, and you don't want to advertise the fact that you could not afford anything more expensive or a little bit more aspirational. And that is one of the reasons why the Nano it didn't really take off. Of course, there were the issue with the fires. There was that arrogance on both the part of the company as well as the dealers. A lot of problems, but those were not addressed at the start. Those things were addressed later on. with this they focused on city people on city folk they positioned this as a cool car for the city and it finally got what a city car needs and that is an automatic transmission this nano it was the world's cheapest automatic car also they finally finally did a hatch that finally opened otherwise the hatch did not open so to access the engine you had to really go from the back to access the boot also you had to go through the rear seats so finally they addressed that but i guess this was a bit too little too late the gen x it ran from 2015 to 2019 and in 2019 i remember reading a report where one nano was sold just one nano was sold in 2019 and well that was that for the nano the nano always made a lot of sense for the city but tata motors probably didn't do that last bit of finishing that is required for a city car they finally did that with the gen x and they gave it the automatic transmission now this was not the cvt that we were promised right at the start but in fact this was the amt which was then gaining in popularity automated manual transmission so basically it still had the guts of the same four speed manual gearbox but with an automated clutch now this amt it had a sport mode and of course you also had manual mode so you can tap down to go down the box it's warning you that it can't go from third to second now because the speeds are too high and tap up to go up the box now of course not the quickest shifting automatic gearbox in the world but it was the most affordable automatic gearbox in the world now what this automatic gearbox accentuates are the <laughs> weak brakes 
So of course you have the manual mode on the gearbox so you can shift down to get a downshift but by the time the gearbox responds well it'll be a little too late so these brakes definitely needed upgrading which wasn't done now in terms of price this wasn't cheap so this was three and a half lakh rupees on roads so around three lakh rupees x showroom which is not a cheap car it's not a one lakh rupee car for instance but it was the cheapest automatic gearbox that you could buy and that's why a lot of people bought this car well not a lot of people a few people if a lot of people had bought it this would still have stayed in production but unfortunately not that many bought it and that's why slowly 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 sales volume started going down 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 and in 2019 one nano was sold and that was it end of story the nano project it could have had a much better ending so the plan was to actually electrify the nano so the rakes which is basically the monocoque would have come from sanan the mother plant and then a joint venture in coimbatore would electrify it put the electric power train into the nano and an electric nano would have made so much sense as a city car it would have been very economical and good range except sales volume of the bread and butter nano the petrol engine nano was so poor that tata motors they just had to bite the bullet cut the losses and pull the plug and with manufacturing of the nano having been stopped there was no place for the jv to get rakes of the nano to electrify and that was it so that's how the electric project also got shelved and now i think it's too late to revive the whole project because number one the plant is shut and number two this will not meet current crash safety norms so this story is over it's it end kaput which is such a shame because even this gen x now okay the automatic gearbox is nothing great but it is convenient it is easy to drive power steering lots of space great visibility i'm doing 80 and it is stable it's not doing anything funny only thing don't throw it into a corner at 80 but apart from that it has everything going for it if only it wasn't positioned as the cheapest car in the world it would have had a much better story and a much better innings So much was expected of the Nano. In fact, in the initial years, the projections were for 250,000 cars every year. But by the end of nine years, when the plug was eventually pulled on the Nano project, just over 300,000 cars were sold. So, as a sales exercise, it was a disappointment. In fact, it was a failure. but it achieved hell of a lot it showed what indian frugal engineering is capable of it put indian automotive engineering on the world map and put india on everybody's radar the nano it is gone but the nano will never be forgotten